there you are, fresh off the train in Utrecht Central Station for the first time. But what do you do? Where do you go? Well, let me show you around for a bit. So, let's start by exiting the train station and entering Utrecht's biggest mall, Hoogkaterijnen. The mall is open every single day, usually from 10 until 8, and it houses all sorts of stores. Here you can find everything from clothing to electronics to food. Now the mall has been around since the 1960s, but it has recently been renewed to what you are seeing right now. Do mind, some parts of the mall are still under construction. So as you study here, more and more nice shops and little food corners may become available to you. But maybe you're not the type of person who likes to eat at such food corners. Well, no worries, because the mall also functions as a passage from Central Station to the Vredeburg, one of Utrecht's most famous squares. There is a market here every Wednesday, Friday and Saturday, the perfect place to get some fresh, locally produced foods. Right, moving on then, if you continue down the Lange Elisabethstraat, which houses many more shops and places to get food, you eventually come upon this beautiful roundabout. And behind this roundabout, you can see looming Utrecht's famous Dom Tower. Although you wouldn't know it because it's under construction right now. However, if you continue onwards until you reach the Goorstraat, have fun pronouncing, you can get a glimpse of what it is supposed to look like. Very pretty. Okay, so if you turn right on the Goorstraat and then left, you can get a closer look. If you want, you can even walk underneath the tower. Which reminds me of a fun fact I once heard from a bus driver. In Utrecht, there is one student association, a fraternity, that forbids its members to ever go underneath the Dom Tower. Now, in the past, a city bus would actually go under the tower. So every time one of these fraternity guys was riding that bus, he would actually jump out, run around the tower and get back in on the other side. Dutch students and their weird customs, right? Well, anyway, we have now reached the Domplein, or Dom Square, which used to be a part of the Dom Church, but a storm destroyed it in 1674. And since then, we have this very nice square, which is also home to the academy building of the university, where you might eventually receive your certificate for completing the MAPS program. At the Domplein, you can also go underground to visit an archaeological exposition, or visit one of the nice cafes and restaurants where some of your fellow MAPS students even work. Moving on then, let's circle behind the Dom Church. Uh, this street is actually called Achter de Dom, which literally translates to behind the Dom, until we reach the Pausdam, this little square in front of you, and the Kommenieuwe Gracht, which is right ahead of you. Now, this part of the Kommenieuwe Gracht will be important for you because of this building, Kommenieuwe Gracht 80. This is one of the many university buildings throughout the city where you might, or probably will, have classes. It also has a nice view of the canal after which the street has been named. But let's go back a bit to the Pausdam and turn left from where we just came from because there are more university buildings I want to show you. So basically you just keep going straight until you see this yellow building. There you turn right. So eventually you will stumble once again up on the Kommenieuwe Gracht because the street and its canal is actually U-shaped, hence the name. Krom is the Dutch word for bent or curve. On the Kommenieuwe Gracht you will find number 20, which is where a lot of our teachers have their offices. Like the Dom, this building is also undergoing renovations, but it's supposed to look something like this. Very picturesque. So, you can't actually enter the building here, for that you need to turn a corner where the building is called Munstraat 2A. Now, if you continue walking through the Munstraat, you will find the Nobelstraat, which has a lot of bars, some coffee shops and even a restaurant that serves cheap meals on Mondays and Tuesdays. And then, if you keep walking, you will come upon this tower. And when you see this tower, you know you have reached a place where you will probably spend a lot of your time. The Drift. Now, the Drift is basically a bunch of old fancy houses that have been repurposed by the University of Utrecht. Here we find the International Office and Career Services, as well as the Library. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we can't really take a look inside, but it's really very nice. It is partly built into the old palace of Louis Napoleon, 
who was once King of Holland, appointed by his more famous brother, Napoleon Bonaparte. Oh, and by the way, the library is also the main entrance for all the classrooms on the drift. And if you want to visit, but you have your bike with you, you can just park it around the corner. Except for right now. Right now, construction is going on here as well. <clears throat> now, I would love to take you through the Voorstraat, which has even more restaurants, cafes, and even a movie theater. But there is construction there as well. So, let's go back over to the drift, because connecting to the drift is Jans Kerkhof. And Jans Kerkhof is a place you will come to like. Because on Jans Kerkhof, there is a cafe where we, MAP students and teachers, like to come together once in a while to have drinks and talk about, well, whatever we like. Those are really fun evenings, I tell you. And if you're done drinking and you're hungry, Jans Kerkhof has you covered too. But enough about foods and drinks, because I still have to show you the most Dutch thing in all of Utrecht. On our way there, we will first come across the Neude, which is the square if you want to spend an afternoon on a terrace. Or, if you are in a more academically inclined mood, this is also where the public library is. Oh yeah, and here too there is construction going on. Alright, moving on. If we continue, we eventually cross a bridge that has a very nice view of the Oude Gracht, which has a ton of shops which you would best discover for yourself. And if we go further and we were to turn left, we would come back to the Vredeburg. But we will keep on going straight for now, past Hoogkat Rijne, towards the most Dutch thing ever. Are you ready? It's the largest bicycle storage facility in the world! Isn't she amazing? Well, if you want to use it, you will need a public transport card or OV chip card. You can also use that card to travel by bus, train, metro, whatever, throughout the Netherlands. So if you want one, you can get one at ovchipcard.nl. All right, but that's it for all the practical information. We've now come back right where we started, right back at Utrecht Central Station. And that concludes our little tour. So if you have any more questions, please feel free to ask your fellow MAP students uh, and if not, I wish you all the best of luck in this beautiful city, the city of Utrecht. Or, as it is often called by its inhabitants, 